You know what's crazy? He said, I'm the boss for real. Pay all the bills. All of us at this table pay all the bills. Thanks. Mm. Pay all the bills. Mm -hmm. Pay all the bills. Don't be talking that ball shit if you ain't paying all the bills, man. Mm -hmm. Now you, you know, you know, you're now tuned into me, 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 me. Million dollars worth of game. I'm Wild 267 right here. This Gilly the Nut right here. Listen, man. Nephew. Shakur beat your ass, Stevenson. Listen, man. He doing his thing. I gave him a new name here. You know, I, I was talking to him before all this shit, giving him some education on the boxing history because I'm a boxing historian on the old school tip. I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about Sonny listening and all that type of Sugar Ray Robinson. Jack Dempsey. You know what I mean? Jack Dempsey. I, gave, I was giving him game on that. That's what I was sprinkling him on. You know, I look at the old fighters, Tice, you know, all the way from Tyson back, you know, uh, you know, uh, Muhammad and them. That's why I look at. I don't really, you know, too much of this. You know what I mean? But boots, you know, I'm looking at boots and you know, and scooter and them. You know what I mean? So Shakur. young boy, step, you know, me young boy, step, you, Devin, Tank. I look at you know, I, ain't, I fuck with you know. I mean, Earl. You know what I mean? I fuck with that. You know, I know a little bit something. I is mean, it Earl? Was it Earl? It's Which Earl to me. It? Fuck all that Earl. Earl. <laughs> Earl. You nigga named Earl, man. Earl Spence, man. I always say that, man. All that arrow and all this shit. Arrow will start with an A, man. Fuck what I would tell you. Call the boy that, man. You know what I mean, all that. So you know what's going down, man. Hey, listen, man. We definitely got, I don't know, to me, I feel like you should be on the pound for pound list. I am. I am for sure. You you you, you on in now? I'm on whoever pound for pound list that they put out, I'm on the pound for pound list. Yeah, you should I gotta be. be. You know I'm what I mean? I'm not they pound for pound list cap. Because right now you got, you know, you got the WBC, 130 pounds, WBC, WBO, Ring Magazine. Facts. Holdy. I'm 24. 24 years old. Killing shit. Grew up in New York, New Jersey. Jersey. The slums. Thanks. How was it growing up? I mean, it was. It, it made me who I am today. Like I feel like um, I came from an environment where it's like I wasn't built to win, but it's like I still made a way to win, and now I'm living good. Like I done bought my mother a house. Like, that's my biggest accomplishment to this day because it's like, once you get your mother a house, it's like you made it. So, right. Um, you know, like, it was hard, but, you know, I'm here. Absolutely. And it was it was nine of y'all, nine children. Facts. I'm the oldest. And you the oldest. Yeah. How does it feel to know that, you know, you got, nine, you got eight other siblings that's all up under you. They look up to you. Mm -hmm. And you was the one to change the, ch the family history. Facts. I, I mean, it feel good just to, you know, I'm a leader at the end of the day, so I got to be the one who set the example for, like, my younger brothers, my younger sisters. Um, I do I do that now. Like, I'm showing them that they can, if they put their mind to something, they can make a way and uh, chase their dream at the end of the day. So I'm just leading the way and keep being Shakur. That's who I am. That's what it's about. Me being a martial artist, we in different sports, right? I'm UFC. <laughs> All that mixed shit. I do a, a little bit of anything. I got a hit list. Like, I got a, you know, growing up, I had a list of people who ass I wanted to whip, right? <laughs> Some people I ran into, they beat my ass, or things didn't turn out right. Some people I didn't run into. What's your record? My record? Yeah, what's your record? You know, uh, my record 13, 24. Four. Four. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, because a lot of them joints, it, it, listen, 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 hold up, hold up. I'm going to give you the reason. Some of the judges in some of my fight, it was in, I was in different people's neighborhoods, so they're going to say somebody. So I took, you know, 18, 20. So you got robbed a couple of times. Yeah, I got robbed plenty okay. of times. 24 know? losses, though. <laughs> Bitch, you ain't get robbed. You got beat the fuck up. I'm just saying that was my, like, come on, man. Like, like you know, like, like I'm to the point where, it's, you know, it was, a, it was a journey, man. You what, know what I mean? What was your record in prison, man? Oh, in prison, I ain't had no record. Everything was peace. I, I had peace treaties in jail. I wouldn't. Okay. I don't think that was a place was necessary for me to have disagreements with people. Okay. So that it was just like that wouldn't have made sense for so me. So where you learn your martial arts? I've been knew that back in the day. Okay. Earl okay. Karate Earl. So you don't even know what's going on. Okay. You don't even know about my, my fault, sensei my fault, Karate my Earl. He's a legend. Okay. I mean, but I'm gonna say this. Everybody got their list. We are gonna get straight to the record. Who 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 on your list? On like, my list that that you need to see that need to see you. Anybody. No, see, no, no, no. Any, no, no. Everybody, Who? Me What's your name? Who? Everybody at 135. I feel like that's my hit see, list. See, I, I don't know 135. 135. 135, so, that's the main weight right uh, now. That's right, the, who that? So, that's Walter Wade, right? So, no, so, so Tank Davis. Everybody at 135 from Tank to Devin to... I'm once in a, like two fights from now, I'm probably going to be at 135. 
Oh, so you going up hunting? I'm going there and I'm taking names and kicking ass. Damn. Out of out of. Okay, so. Out of. Hold on, hold on, Devin. My dad, my man's though. No, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Him and Dev in the same weight class. No, he won uh, weight class below Dev, but he's saying in two fights he's moving up to that weight class. Oh, so he ready to see Dev. Who, 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 who's going to win that fight? I'm saying you. I'm asking you. You the boxer, <laughs> yeah. motherfucker. I know that. I, you know. I think it's going to be a great fight. You know what I mean? I think that. Uh, I think Dev's a little bigger than Shakur. I think uh, he may be a little taller. They might be the same height. I, I hear a little taller than a little taller than yeah, you. Yes. So he might got the reach advantage. I feel like uh, Shakur has the IQ advantage, you know what I mean? Because he don't really get hit at all. Devin don't really get hit a lot either, but he gets hit a little bit more than Shakur. So I think it would be a really great fight. If I had to pick who I would say I think is going to win, I might got to give the slight advantage to Shakur just because I always go with the, the fighter that's a little bit more defensive sound. You know what I'm saying? So I probably would. I don't, I'm going to just but say both this. both of them is great fighters. Fuck all that. I'm going to say this. I think you only say that whoever who's sitting on the fucking couch because I don't really know this shit that much. I'm more UFC boy. I think if somebody else would say you, you would have went with them. So I don't even know about you. If you, I'm starting to question your boxing historian and journalism and all this bullshit you be saying. Now, Anybody that know boxing understand what I just broke down and they like, no, that is the truth. Everything he's saying is is the honest to God truth. But, 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 but listen, when listen. you got two motherfuckers that got superstar talent type of level... You feel what I'm saying? It's, it, it's hard to choose who going, because motherfuckers have off nights. This is boxing. You can have an off night. You feel what I'm saying? It's a motherfucker named, named Shane Mosley who lost to Vernon Forrest twice. Vernon Forrest is not a better fighter than Shane Mosley. He, but he is. He beat him. No, he's not. See, this, this, See this, you this don't shit. No, 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 no. I do understand, Sam. What I understand is, understand, what Mike. I understand, you be you making right? these predictions and, and giving up all this information about boxing, and you never was in the fucking ring. You don't, you, you're not no boxer. First like, you of all, I tended your fucking eyes no, you before was, you was no I tended your eyes. <laughs> like, I, hey, listen, I, just, I, I tended your crazy. shit, and you did not see none of that shit coming. I just think it's crazy. All you saw was your shit. Listen, listen, listen. So I just what think are you crazy. talking about? I just think when commutators try to commutate or talk about, oh, I'm a journalist on sports. No, don't put me in, <laughs> don't put me in Stephen A. Smith. You Stephen A. Smith. I ain't no fucking Stephen A. Smith. You ain't do that. What fight you at? <laughs> What you fucking mean? What was your record? Where's the it fight? It wasn't 13 and 24. It don't matter. Fuckers you talk Where's about. Where's your fucking record? Fuckers you talk about. What gym you come and out of? I seen you take a loss. There's a thousand what? gyms in Philly. He don't come out of no gym in Philly. TKO. Philly. Fuckers you talk about. I, TKO. Why, you, why you think I know everybody in TKO. the boxing world? Because nigga, I'm a licensed boxing trainer. What the fuck who, are you who talking the about? the fuck did you train? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, I'm taking this. Stop coming. Like, like, that's people hold keep on, coming on there. Hold on, wait. The fuck is you just like seeing me? Make calls. <laughs> I can make calls, nigga. Who the, you ain't no real trainer. Fuck no. <laughs> Who did you train? You know, all he know is he can tell you the greatest trainers. Oh yeah, what's the name? And like he came up under their toology or something. Listen, first of you all, I, I did. Bozy. Bozy, I did listen. come up under their the, toology. The Bozy Box ever fucking train you? Fuck no. Boxing real. <laughs> the Bozy ever train you? You want me to call him? Who Bozy? Yeah. Fuck no. You. Fuck, you know, all right. Fuck, fuck you, you mean? Of course he trained you. Fuck is you talking about? I got trained by the best. Boxing Rail, Ridge, Pedro, Bozy, motherfucking, motherfucking, the good brother Nassim Richardson. Come on, man. I know all of them, too. Fuck yeah. this wrong with you. I got trained by everybody, you know, you know nigga. What I mean. Fuck wrong trained. with you. Nigga. You got trained to fight nobody. To just talk. <laughs> no, you ain't fight nobody. No, you got trained in prison. <laughs> the fuck out of here. You ain't, about you ain't fight nobody. Ass, nigga. <laughs> they ran the train <laughs> on you in prison, You would have been a journeyman fight. I was trained and you was getting trained. The fuck is you talking about you nut ass They ran the train on you in the shower. This nigga right here ain't fight nobody. Shut up. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now let me tell you something about New Amsterdam Vodka. You know, life ain't going your way. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. Caught your bitch cheating today. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. Got to get into a rumble with Shakur Stevenson today. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. Because you're going to get your ass whipped. Let me tell you something. It's distilled five times. It's filtered three times for a clean, crisp finish. You could drink it straight up. You could drink it on the rocks. You could drink it with soda, juice, 
or you can make a classic New Hampshire damn mule. I mean, it's up to you, however you want to do it. But it's playoff time. Make sure you get you some. You know what I mean? It's great for pre-gaming. You bring the family over, yo, know, have a great time. Get someone you're out and about at your local liquor store. New Hampshire damn vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports and the presenting sponsor of Million Dollars Worth of Gaming. Shout out to New Hampshire damn queen, 2 TV you know, at the crib with the girlfriends all right. doing all that up. All right. So let me, let's get off this nut ass nigga who was getting trained in the prison shower. Fuck out of here. Who's your top five boxers right now? Top five boxers right now. See, I had, I had Canelo real high, but like he's still real high on my list. I just don't put him like number one. I feel like um, you got Terrence Crawford, um, Earl Spence, um, Boots, Tank. Um, I can't I can't put myself in here though, cause it's like I feel like I'm above. Oh okay. I feel like I'm I'm at a, a level where I feel like I'm the best in boxing. Oh I feel. Oh like, oh, oh, oh 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 he he just said he better than Earl Spence and all them boys. Yeah. I feel like I'm better than oh, I'm shit. the best fighter in. See, boxing. I don't be watching like I don't be knowing what's going. That's on. what I feel like personally. Right. But um, four if I say uh, what's the little Chinese dude? And you. In 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 a way. Uh, yeah, yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I forgot Tyson Fury too. He a bad motherfucker. Yeah, Tyson Fury is a bad motherfucker. So, if if you had it your way, your next four fights, I will fight Lemachenko, the winner out of Devin and Cambosis, um, Ryan Garcia, and Tank. Ryan Garcia ain't gonna fight you. No, nah, you're not. Out of those four fights, which fight you think would be your hardest? Probably either Devin or Tank. I feel like with Devin, he uh, me and him's been in the ring a bunch of times, so we f- we familiar with each other. And with Tank, um, well, I've been in the ring with Tank too, but I just feel like uh, I think the like the odds makers gonna make that fight like a lot closer than like a lot of people think. So you think, wait, so you, wait, 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 wait. So you think that, because you know Tank got that, 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 that power in them motherfucking hands. You got to hit me, though. Like, you got to hit me. It ain't, I don't, like, I personally feel tank like. Tank sharp, too. I personally feel like if your best shot is to knock me out, you lost. Like, if the only thing that you can do to win is knock me out, you lost. That's what I feel like. Damn. So you 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 feel like in a twelve fight in a twelve round fight for some belts, Tank is not going to land no punches, no solid. I, I'm saying if your best chance is to knock me out, you lost. I don't care who you is, because you're gonna be looking for that shot all night, all night. That's gonna be something that you look from from round one to round twelve. Tank is a hell of a counter puncher too, though. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if you gotta land one shot to win, it's over. Okay, so Lomachenko is a he's an executioner. He probably would be one of the like toughest tags just mentally, but I just feel like, uh, like I said, I've been in the ring with all them dudes. Like, I done sparred with every last one of them. How was, many of them dudes beat your ass? Ain't no, none of them beat my ass. Only person I can say beat my ass to this day and being realistic is Terrence Crawford when I was like younger. And you yeah. sparred him? Yeah. Tanged you right up. Well, that's why. I was, I was yeah, like, I was like 17. You know, right the fuck up. I was 17. You, though. Up. you got an L on your jacket too. I don't want to hear that shit. Yeah, I'm right, I'll take it. I ain't tripping. Fucking L on Crawford. Jacket. Terrence Crawford tightened him up. Yeah, he did. That's a dark skinned little dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah, got me when I was like 17, man. He did. Damn. You I spar- sparred him 100 times after that, though. Like, it's. Oh, it's, so you up after the after that one time? I'm not, I don't speak on sparring and say I'm up, especially not with my brother. It's good work. Yeah. That's my nigga. But sparring don't count. But he tightened you up, huh? Yeah, when I was 17, he beat my sparring ass. Don't he beat the shit out of me. I ain't gonna lie. He fucked so me up. Hold up. So it's a rule that sparring don't count? I mean, it's not. It's it's like a written rule that of like, you know what happened. Is because he might go to sparring a day and he might just be specifically working on something. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? He might be, you know what I'm your saying? Your coach might handicap you, tell you you only could use the jab that right. day. Or you got to use your defense, move around. Like, they might tell you certain things that you got to do. Right. That's sparring, so... You feel what it I'm saying? It don't count. It's really for like preparing for the fight. Right. But and then at the end of the day, too, you got niggas like uh you got niggas like motherfucker told me one time, yeah, man, I you know, I ain't gonna say no names, but yeah, I was, you know, I used to spar Danny Garcia all the time and you know what I'm saying? I used to I used to put hands on him and it's kinda <laughs> like 
it's kind of like, all right, a part of me could believe that because you got you got 16 ounce gloves on and you got headgear on. Thanks. But when you take that shit off, the headgear off, and you put eight ounce gloves on, you're not gonna take 10 ounce gloves. You're not gonna take half the chances that you took doing sparring when you fighting this nigga now because one punch is gonna get you the fuck Thanks. out of here. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why sparring don't really mean that and much. People be bragging about it like they do that, but then in they like career, they don't be doing shit. So they don't do nothing, huh? Yeah, that shit a little. They be suspect. This episode of Million Dollars Worthy Game is brought to you by Roman Daily Vitamins. I'm talking about, listen, man. I'm talking about start prioritizing your health with new Roman Daily Multivitamins. It's an easy way to support physical activity, brain health, your immune system, your heart health. No prescription required. You don't need no prescription. I'm talking about some Roman Daily Multivitamins. I'm talking about amazing. Now, before I even get deep into it, I need you to know this statement has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any diseases. Make Roman Daily. I'm talking about make Roman Daily a part of your daily routine and hit the ground running. What is we talking about? We're talking about Roman Daily. Roman Daily. Daily, you know, <laughs> Roman and helped you out in other departments, but right now it's going to help you out in this department. And what I need you to do right now, you're going to get fifteen dollars off your first order. When I'm talking about your first order. What I need you to go to is Roman.com/slash/daily-multivitamins. I'm talking about you're going to get fifteen dollars off your first order right now. Fifteen dollars off, and Roman been taking care of you in many other departments. I'm talking about each tablet has vitamin A, B12, C, D. I'm talking about well with calcium, zinc, 17 more vital nutritions that support your health. We're talking about Roman Deli. And what you need to do right now, go to Roman.com slash hyphen multivitamins. You're going to get $15 off your first order. What are you waiting for? Roman Deli multivitamins. Okay, so you at 24 years old. Floyd Mayweather at 24 years old. Me, that's who I, I would want to fight. I feel like when they keep asking you, like, back in the day, who you the person you would want to fight is Floyd because... I feel like Floyd, the only person I ever seen, like, think like me. Like, we thinkers in the ring. Like, we go in the ring and we got a mind where it's like we breaking you down. Like, our best attribute is our minds. Like, mm -hmm. it's not that we're going to be the fastest. It's not that we're going to be the strongest. It's the fact that we smarter than every fighter. So, I just feel like pretty boy Floyd, like, I would have loved to, like, been in the ring one. What you think the outcome would have been? Me winning. Okay, who it is. Whoever, whoever you say, I'm going to say I'm winning. Like, I believe in myself. Absolutely. And so they say, you know, I've seen this, this, some statistics somewhere, and it said that when Floyd was your age, he got hit with 8% of the punches that was thrown at him. Yeah. He said, they said that at this age, you get hit with 4% of the punches that's thrown at you. Yeah. You think you got the greatest defense of all time? I think that I got to keep working to get there. But I feel like, you know, um, right now I'm on a, I'm on a route to doing it. Like, But I can be one of the best defensive fighters ever. Right. For sure. Do you, uh, like, as, when you go to fight, is it defense first? And yeah. then and I mean, uh, I was always taught, like, my grandfather is my coach. Yeah. So coming up, it was always like, hit and don't get hit. That was right. the name of the game. Like, right. that's how you win boxing. I would... I was the best amateur because I go in there, I hit, and I don't get hit. So right. as I got older and now that I'm pro, it's like I'm mastering it. Like, if you watch my fights, it's like I can stand right there in front of somebody, make them miss mm -hmm. every shot. Right. But I land two, three shots on my own, and they all accurate. So um, I was just mastering hit and don't get hit. How, go ahead. Who fights did you? I know, you know, who? what old fighters do you watch? You sit there and watch the whole fight and just study it. Andre Ward, Floyd Mayweather. Pinnell Whitaker, Sugar Ray Leonard. Like, but, like, my last few fights, I've been watching, like, a lot of, like, current fighters like Boots and okay. Bud Crawford and Earl Spence and them dudes, so. And Canelo. Yeah, I, li I like Canelo. Yeah, yeah, I know. I see you speak on Canelo a lot. We ain't going to let him, we ain't going to throw, not throw him out there because Bivol beat the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, he just, I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, it's just. He ain't use a jab. I don't know. And, and, and. The reality of it is he don't wanna you don't wanna do that rematch, man. Nah, he don't. You know what I mean? Because it's at the end of the day, man, it's only a cer certain level you're gonna be able to go to when you was fighting at 154, bro. Yeah. You started off fighting at 154, you go up to 160, then you go up to 168, 
Then you you go up to one seventy five. Now mm-hmm. you fight motherfuckers that's walking around at two 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 oh nine and shit. They, they they niggas is really heavyweights. They don't see him doing nothing different in the rematch. No, you know what I'm saying Dang. because he because. <laughs> He came in there a lot more muscular and more, but you 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 know you relying on just throwing bombs. Bombs power. You know what I mean? And you can't you got to break a nigga like that down. You can't you can't go in there. He's strong. That shit wasn't even breaking through his guard. Like I be trying to. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Like the people that like with the most power. Once they go against somebody that's like skillful, you start to see like where they really at. Like if you watch Tyson Fury versus Wilder, you got to see like he wanted to not come out, but. Tyson Fury was too skillful, and then he just started beating him up. So I just feel like when it comes down to it, like skills is the most important thing in boxing. Right. This episode of Million Dollars Worthy Game is brought to you by eBay. eBay is once again changing the game, buying and selling sneakers online. I'm talking about from rare. I'm talking about rare dead stock to the latest releases, even carefully love pre-owned sneakers. I'm talking about kicks, man, unbelievable. I'm talking about what you need to do right now, eBay sneakers. I'm talking about authenticity guaranteed. What is we waiting for? I'm talking about eBay. They changing the game. I'm talking about with millions of sellers across the globe, the drops never stop. I'm talking about millions of sellers. eBay. We're talking about your kicks. Where you going to get your kicks from? I'm getting mine from eBay. That's where you better get yours from. Right now, I'm talking about eBay is not playing no games. When you buy with eBay, authenticity guarantee, you can rest easy knowing that everything included in the box came with a 100% is 100% legit. You don't have to worry about nothing. eBay is not playing no games. I'm talking about 100% legit. You know it's a lot of, uh, it's not, but we talking about eBay. I'm talking about they changing the game, man. Right now, eBay. Your grandfather, since since you started boxing, he been there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how was, like, I know when you got goals and everything, I know a, a big part of your your journey is, you know, to really please your grandfather as well. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, he probably, he probably, how did you end up even going to the gym? When I was five years old, he uh, used to play, like, baseball, but it used to be at, like, a, uh, it's like, rec league, like, at a park type shit. And uh, he had some of his fighters come to the uh, baseball game. When I met them, I'm like, uh, I asked him, like, yo, what y'all, y'all boxers? They're like, yeah, we box, But they was, like, older than me. I thought that was, like, the coolest shit in the world. Like, they got hands, so it's like they know what they doing with them, and nobody going to try them in no type of way. So I'm like, uh, I asked my grandfather the next day, like, can I go to the gym with you? Took me to the gym. I just fell in love with the sport. Like, I fell in love as soon as I walked in. I saw people sparring, punching the bags. I'm, I'm ready. I'm eager. I'm like, Papa, can I go get in the ring? Can, can you find me somebody to fight? Da, 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 da. He's like, nah, I got to teach you how to defend yourself first. Like, that right. was the main thing. Like, teach me how to defend myself, so. From there, it's just I just fell in love with boxing. Like I'm still in love with boxing to this day. Right. Stories from the cell. Now, it was a time when I was in prison, right? I thought I was gonna be top flight fighter. I'm in jail, ain't got nothing to do. I always say, come on down to the boxing gym. Mm. So I say, all right, cool. Now, it was a couple different incidents that happened, but I started running the yard, all this, all this crazy shit, right? And the good thing about the gym time, it was during lockdown time. So if you had to go to the gym, you get out yourself. So I'm like, I'm going down there and live life. Fuck, I'm going to be a boxer now, right? So I go down there, I'm doing my thing, training and all that shit. The door. I'm, all in the, I'm all doing my thing. But the part that I loved about boxing for that moment that I was a boxer, because it wasn't that long. My career wasn't that, that long. The moment that I was a boxer, <laughs> fuck you worrying about it for I used to just like training. Yeah. That was boxing to me. I ain't, I mean, fuck, I gotta get in the ring for it. That's, man, you know, <laughs> that, that, you know. So I'm in there, I'm training all the time. All, 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 I, I knew all the moves, right? No, it I knew all the fucking moves, right? <laughs> Straight up, I knew all the moves. Shout out to, uh, you know, uh, Delbert Africa, Willie Stokes, Old Head Stacy, Bo Massey, all the, all the trainers in there, right? Mm-hmm. Lou Brown, all of them. They was up Dallas, right? Legendary boxers. Uh, that's where Bernard was at back in the day. Yeah. yeah, all that type shit. That was one of his trainers, Lou Brown. Was right? that the trainer that no, no, you no, thought no. was teaching you? No, Lou Brown, Lou Brown was teaching me. That was the same one that was teaching Bernard. So shut up. Let's fuck out of here. I'm talking about the one that was 
really try to put the fuck out here. <laughs> put the put the put the put the sexual game no, down on you. Put you huh? No, get out uh, of here. That ain't so the same so one. right. So now I'm in that joint, right? The one incident happened to me when a motherfucker hit me so hard I spit the mouthpiece out just to get a breather, right? <laughs> that was the one time. But then I realized, man, I I kept going in there, man, and things wasn't turning out right for me. You know what I mean? And I and I but but it was a moment I thought I was gonna be the champion of the world, man. <laughs> yeah, all right. Like from the training aspect. Yeah. Like the training, like you you ain't gotta worry about nothing. You're hitting a heavy bag, all the dumb <laughs> shit, running around, jump rope, doing all the fly shit in oh, the mirror. Nah, you're a jump rope. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. I know how to jump rope. You know, that's how you I used to be that crossing. Good, though. That's how I used to be crossing it. Put it, put it. I listen, I was good, man. I, that was you gotta stand. I was like 19 in, man. That was years ago, man. So I'm doing my thing and all that shit, but then I realized, man, that shit gets rough in there quick. All that shit you be knowing, see the heavy bag don't hit back. Facts. All that shit, the all mix. the speed bag and all that dumb shit, that shit ain't for anybody, man. That's why you ain't never getting this. You ain't never getting in the ring. I, you had the same feeling I had, nigga. But, but it was like, it was just a jail. It, it was like a jail dream because ain't no nigga ever punched my mouthpiece out. First of all, no, he didn't punch it. Out. I spit it out. And he hit me in the body shot. <laughs> Fuck is you mean? He hit me with that body shot. Boom! I said, "Oh damn, my joint! I'm trying to get a breather, right?" Oh man! It, it, listen, and I used and I used to always change the sport. I go in there, motherfucker. I do a couple moves, get my little look. That shit look good. Motherfucker might throw something. If that shit, I catch that shit somewhere, I lock it in. That's when the wrestling come on. I started to tug of war battle. Fuck all that, man. In I was the just boxing wait. gym? Yeah, in the boxing gym. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't wrestle him down to the ground, but you know, I'd be from here. Oh, oh. Hold me. Get off me. Get off me. Hold me. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get that clock work out. I don't know. I love and, and then one time, one time, Lou Brown told me, the fuck is you doing in there, man? You, you sure you won't be in there? Yeah, I got it. I got it, man. Anything cool, Lou? This ain't about nothing. He said, man, you ain't even do nothing, man. You ain't swing one time. So, so can you beat Gilly? Oh, I beat the shit out of Gilly. I beat the shit out of Gilly. I don't believe it. I beat the shit out of Gilly. That dumb shit he going to throw. I don't believe it. But I said that shit straight down the pipe. You see that, Jack? I'm betting on Gilly. You see that? You see that? Them joints, ain't, them joints is good for two things. Stealing and beating, jerking off. Listen, man, I'm telling <laughs> you, man. only thing he ever did good, two things he ever did good in his I'm life. Telling I'm telling Steal you. Steal and fucking jerk off. I'm telling you, you'll be, you, you'll be in trouble, man. But listen, this this the old twist. I was I was in the ring. I was a part of a gym. <laughs> you never was a part of no fucking gym. You never was a part of no gym. But you, every time you're on there, yeah, what's your name, Castillo? Uh, uh, it's one dude named you always say. And I said, damn. And I just asked you, I said, damn, you always talking about him. He ain't no fucking body. I seen him fight the lad. What's the little short crazy dude name? They got his ass whipped. <laughs> the Latino dude, man, the Mexican dude. Canelo? No, not him. I forget this one boy name. We'll start with an R or some shit. Uh, and I don't know who the fuck. Well, whatever. 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 You always talking this deep shit about these boxers. I'm like, this dude always talking this deep shit. You never fought. I, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. What <laughs> the fuck is you talking about? And I fought in my fight game nights, and everybody knew my fucking fight game nights. Nah, I ain't ahead. never got socked and rolled up under a fucking car like I work at Jiffy. No, you Luke. ain't never, did, you ain't never put it you, out there nigga. to the public. You ain't share it with the public. Nah, because I never had You got happened. your ass with a lot of times. You just no. ain't share it with the public. Nah, when, when, fuck out of here. You when, when you ever see me get my ass with? When, when, when you ever was part of a gym? Like, when, when, you ever, <laughs> when you ever signed up? You was out here. I was in jail. You could have went pro and all <laughs> amateur. You ain't got no record for nothing. <laughs> the fuck is we talking about? But you always out here with some Stephen A. Smith shit. Oh yeah, because if Canelo and what's his name Loma Chico, all these fuck, I don't even fucking know these dudes what they look like. But you always talking about yeah, because Bud, Bud, Crow, who the fuck is this dude? Bud, he sound like he drank beers. I don't know these niggas. But at the end of the day, it's like this motherfucker one day tell me, so, yeah, this name, uh, no, his name Earl. No, the nigga named Earl, man. Fuck, <laughs> fuck is you talking about? Only thing I know about him is that I know a couple things. He, he you know, I know he, I know him and Boots got a fight. You see what I'm saying? And I know he be with Yellow Beezy. That's it. And he's from Dallas, Texas, and he like the Cowboys. All this other shit, I don't really get into it. But you be sitting here talking about these boys' life. Yeah, because what's the name for him? Yeah, because his amateur career. Damn, damn, Shakur. I remember when they gave you the silver and you was crying. And, like, you know all this shit for nothing. You don't get paid. You a fucking boxer commentator for nothing. That never fought about shit. So I don't understand this dumbass shit he be on. You kill me with that. You making all these bets, losing this money. No, what's his name going to fight him? Because when he fought Johnny Donut, uh, he, he 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 damn near couldn't make it. And what's his name beat him? So he going to beat him. Get that shit. It, only thing that matter about this boxing shit, I don't care what Shakur talking, I don't care what the fuck he talking. You get in there, and it ain't your day, you're done. Fuck who your coach is. Fuck what gym you from. Fuck the amateurs. Fuck if you got silver, gold. Anybody get their ass whipped on that day. 
You know what I'm saying? He told me, say, oh, Canelo, I can't believe it. He's a fucking human being. He went in there and got his ass beat. <laughs> all that legendary shit walking around, being tough, and all at the press conference, yeah, I'm tougher than you. No, I'm tougher than you. Don't look away first. I'm going to look away first. I'm tough. All that, that shit don't mean nothing. But you ain't do nothing. Shut up, man. I'm giving out fucking bad report in the box, and you reporting bullshit, man. The fuck, man? Man, fuck this nigga, man. He's a bootleg he ass, bullshit. bootleg ass kung fu director. I know my shit. Don't nobody want to hear that shit, man. That yeah, was funny though. I ain't gonna lie though. You know some dumb shit. You just mad because I know a lot about the sport and you don't know shit. You was a fan from afar, man. You, you was a I mean? fan, man. Anytime you call a nigga named a Errol, stand. anytime you call a nigga named Errol, Earl, is <laughs> is pretty obvious. You don't know shit about the sport. So fuck out of here. Nigga named Earl, nigga Listen, from the man, ghetto. Let me yeah. ask you a question. Yeah, you got. You won the, your second belt as soon as you won. You know, drop down to your knees. Ah, oh, baby, I like it. That's right. <laughs> oh, what you here forever? Ah. <laughs> How big was that moment for you, man? Nah, I feel like that was uh, one of the best days of my life, if I'm being real. Like, I feel like um, everything happened how it was supposed to happen. Like, I knew once I won what I was going to do, um, I was ready. I don't know. It was a great night. Um, just proposing what to they her. they or something? It's cool. Just proposing to her was like, you know, I was more nervous to do that than actual fight, to be honest. You was? Yes. Like, going in the ring, I wasn't nervous. That's All right, regular. let me just ask you this question. Hypothetically speaking, we know you won. What if you don't want in and got caught with one punch and went to sleep? Would you have still proposed? Whew. <laughs> It's a hard question to ask. You would have got the fuck and they woke you the fuck nah, up. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. You gonna marry me. I ain't gonna lie. I'm sleep. I, I ain't gonna lie. Being real, I don't like to lose, so I probably would have had to like. Yeah, you would have say that shit for a different I'd have probably had to walk out of there. Like, I would have walked out of the arena at that point. I don't know what I would have done. And I told you this upstairs. I want to tell you this on camera. Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight, where we highlight people that's making it happen out here. I'm talking about they're making it happen and they're gonna make you happen. Today, all you trappers out there, we got trappers way out. Mm. He's going to come here. He's going to give you the game. Listen, first is what you need to do from the rip. You need to text game to 301-753-3349. 301-753-3349. Text game. He's going to give you his free ebook mm. and a free course. Mm. All you do is out there that's trapping is trying to find a way out. Tell us about Come on, man. Tell us what's going on, man. Man, look. I'm the trapper's way out. Uh, I'm from the DMV area, but I'm helping people nationwide. Um, I'm showing everybody how to get out their trap, not just the streets. Um, but that's where I started this movement of, you know, people uh, who was trapping in the streets. Because this is how I was able to get out my trap when I started learning about financial literacy and how to leverage it, how to start businesses, how to implement this stuff I was doing in the streets into legal business. Mm. But then once I started growing, I started seeing that it was, it was other people in other traps. You know, I didn't just trap in the streets. I got a college degree. I graduated from Bowie State. Mm -hmm. um, I got a 12-year accounting career, mm -hmm. um, and I've been fired from, like, nine jobs in my 12-year career. So I start saying, like, some people was just trapped in the nine-to-five. Some people trapped in corporate America. Some people trapped in a negative environment. Some people trapped in their own self-doubt, They mm. limiting belief. Some people is sleeping with the enemy. Some people got a spouse in their house that don't really want to see them grow and win because they mm. scared that damn world gonna get exposed to this person and then damn they might leave me damn so i'm saying some people that the person who's sleeping yeah, next to them shit. don't even that's want them shit. to really grow and go to that next level because they scared oh they gonna start attracting these type of people they might outgrow me mm -hmm. right i might not start leveling up to them right you know what i'm saying so that's what i started doing man teaching people how to escape all of those traps through a mentorship even people that's in jail, I got three mentees that's currently in prison, incarcerated, and they in my mentorship. They got businesses, they got business credit, they personal credit, and they in jail, and they incarcerated. I'm talking about dudes. how you make that happen. How the I'm, fuck you? Do? I'm talking about dudes literally sneaking the phone. People would just find me, hear about the impact that I'm making, and then people will recommend people and say, "Hey, you need to get with my guy." And these yeah. dudes was trying to pay me from jail. Like, look, I want to be in this mentorship. I got some money. And I'm like, you in jail? Everybody who's in prison, I give them, extend like two people a month, my mentorship for free if they incarcerated. Yeah. And so these dudes is building businesses. They add value to the community. And a lot of times people look down on the people that's in jail, but not realizing 
Those are some of the people that got the distractions out their mind. Yes, sir. They going hard on they whatever they trying to do, and they got the time to sit down and function. A lot of times, people out here in the free world, we got so many distractions. We can go out tonight. We can do whatever we want. So it get a little hard to be like focused. Right. But some of them dudes in jail, like they really are adding value. They really are society. They don't want you to think that. But I'm showing people how to escape the trap. No matter if you incarcerated. No matter if you Trying to get out the nine to five, you trying to get out the streets, whatever. That's major now. Yes. Now, this the whole thing. And this free ebook that you're giving out, right? Because before I even get to the ebook, I need to I need you to really break something down to people. A lot of people, when they hear trap, they think about the street game. Mm-hmm. Break the trap down, the real life trap that real life people that's not even the street is going through. Man, the real trap is how they teach us, right? You know, we get out of uh, high school, they tell us we gotta go to 12 years of high school. Then what they tell us, oh, the only way to be successful is to go to college. Mm -hmm. So then we fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we go to college, we don't have no money, so we're going to take on debt. We also going to live on campus. That's going to cost us more money. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to pay interest. Then the interest is deferred, so it's going to cost us more money. So then once we get out of school, after four or five years, most of the time it takes you five years, took me five because I was playing around or being irresponsible, not really taking my studies 100% the way I was supposed to because I was trying to get money as well. Mm -hmm. Um, You come out here and you got all this financial debt and then you can't even buy your first home, better yet, find a job. Once I graduated college in 2009, it took me six months to find a job Mm -hmm. out of college. With a degree. With a, a business degree. You know what I'm saying? In a DMV area where there are plentiful jobs. So at the time, I'm still trapping, and I'm like, dang, I did everything they told me to do, and I'm still stuck in the trap. So then my mother helped me get my first job, and then once I get that job, I was only making $15 an hour. So I'm like, this ain't enough. I'm still trapping. Right. Right? And then I start saying, this ain't enough. I start getting fired from multiple jobs. I've been fired from nine jobs in a 12-year career. I got fired twice in 2020. I got fired April 2020, and I got fired December 2020. Mm. Him 500 actually helped me get fired the second time. How he helped you get fired? Because I joined his mentorship in September 2020, and he ended up putting me on a private jet. We took a trip to Chicago, and then he was like, yo, you need to hop on this private jet. So I hop on a jet, and I posted some stuff, some some pictures that, you know, of, of the day, and uh, he told me to create a mentorship. And so... I was with an MLM company. I was making like twenty five thousand a month. Tell them what MLM is. Multi level marketing. So I was doing basically affiliate marketing. Mm-hmm. You sell a product or a service that you don't directly own. You just kind of use your relationships, your community, and bring the end user or the end service to whoever. Right. So I was making twenty twenty five thousand a month doing that. When I met him five hundred, he was like, "Yo, how much you making? And how many people you got?" I was like, "Man, I got seven hundred people." He was like, how much you making? I was like, man, I'm making 30000 He was like, bro, that ain't no money. Like, And I was like, what? <laughs> he was like, yo, you can hop on my private jet. I'll show you. I only got 500 people, and I'll show you what I'm making. And he showed me he was making a million dollars a month, and that just changed my mindset because back in my community where I was at, I, sh- I told people I was making 30000 They were like, man, you capping. You lying. But mm-hmm. now I get around this dude, and he's like, yo, I don't know how you surviving off 30 bands a month. <laughs> that ain't enough. And that's why exposure is everything. Right. Because you would get around bigger fish and start seeing the bigger picture, and then it start making you a vision. He put me on a private jet, and I'm like, yo, I need this life forever. Yo, what do I got to do? Right. He was like, yo, you need to take all that knowledge you just told me, all that stuff you're doing. You need to start your own movement. You got that company eating off you. They taught you some good things that built your foundation, but now it's time to roll. Right. Right? So I started transitioning, and the company just cut me off. So I lost my full-time job that was 80000 a year, and then I lost this opportunity that was 20000 a month. So that following month, I had to go all in on me. That following month, I made the most money I ever made in 30 days. I made 66000 in 30 days yeah. after I got fired for the second time. Guess who hits me up? Van Taylor. Van. Van. He talked about me on the podcast. Yes, I was the man. dude he was talking about who only had like 2,000 followers. I hit $100,000 a month. Yeah. So what happened was Van hit me and was like, yo, I see what you're doing, but I want to give you some free game. He gave me some game. I implemented it. He started seeing it was working. I started seeing it was working. He was like, yo, it's time to go in. Let's 
you need to drop this bag on me. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, dang, I got to drop another bag? So I called my mother. I'm like, Mom, I'm about to drop a bag. And she's like, man, you just paid Marcus. Now you paying this other stranger? What's up with you and these strangers? And I'm like, Mom, I'm investing in information. Mm -hmm. But this is a, taught me another lesson. Because <laughs> most of the time when you're about to invest in information, you tell your loved ones, you tell your close friends, hey, I'm about to make this move. I'm about to better myself. I'm about to do this. Guess the first thing they do? You tripping. They discourage you. Mm -hmm. They don't see where you're going. They don't see your vision. They don't see what you see. Some people really care about you, and they just don't want you to get got. They don't want you to get robbed. They can't really see. They just stuck in the old ways of doing things. Right. That's why you got to get around different people. Because my own mother want the best for me. She didn't know that me meeting these people and investing in myself and investing into them was going to be her investment because now she got whatever she want. She right. didn't see that at the time. She just saw me paying 5000 to somebody who might not live up to whatever, right. right? So she tried to discourage me when I joined Marcus Joint. Then when I met Van, I'm at a $66,000 a month, and he telling me I need to go to another level. And I'm like, bro, like, he just trying to hustle me. But I'm like, you know what? I'm a gambler. I'm a risk taker. <laughs> I'm going a, I'm to a drop the bag. You know what I'm saying? In two months, I had a hundred thousand dollar month. Just what he said. He was like, "Yo, you need to be making a hundred thousand dollars a month. We gotta go up." And then I had about three, four hundred thousand dollar months last year, just doing a couple things that Van taught me. So then that's when I was like, "Yo, every time I invest in mentorship, it'll make me apply the action to go." So that's when I was like, "Yo, it also puts you in the room with like minded people." So I was like, "This the cheat code." Paying to get in rooms, not just getting in the free rooms, but paying to get in rooms because now I'm around other people that invested five, ten, fifteen thousand. Right, right. Around other people that invested to go to these events, so they want to make the most of it too. Right. And then that's what started helping me cultivate this community I created. And then I start just teaching people all the ways that I was making money, all the ways that I got out of my nine to five, all the ways that I was able to quit hustling, all the ways I was able to quit doing anything illegal. And just got my time freedom and literally got my life, my whole 24 hours. And I'm trying to show other people how to do this. And they looking at me like they skeptical, or like it's a scam because society teaches us that we got to go to school, go to college, get a grad degree, get a job, invest in the stock market, work all your life just to live the last 10 years of your life. And you can barely afford anything. Most people only <laughs> retire because most people only retire to get a second job so they can get a second income. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm showing people how to get out that trap, how to open their mind, how to do different things, how to, you know, instead of trading time for money, how to use leverage, how to add value, how to help people. Right. You know, everybody got a natural gift that somebody does not know or somebody wants to learn, but you just got to learn how to find that person, how to create content, how to find your target market, that person who's looking for your information. And so that's why I teach people how to so do So what's in that free ebook? Man, that free ebook, I show people how to turn their credit into cash. I show people how to read their credit report because one of the one of the f major things that entrepreneurs got to learn is how to leverage their personal credit and their business credit. So you got to fix your personal credit and learn how to structure it before you can even start thinking about business credit. So we also go into business credit. I also show them how to make residual income just from having good credit. You can make money just from having good credit. I'm showing people that. I'm showing them how to go to banks and get multiple credit cards and only get one inquiry. You know what I'm saying? It's so much game in the book that, I mean, it's just endless. I'm teaching them affiliate marketing. You know, that's one of the biggest pieces because a lot of people think they can't be an entrepreneur because they like, I don't got no money and I don't got no credit. So where am I going to start? Boom, affiliate marketing, create a community. I watched you do it. Start going viral, start creating valuable content that people are going to look at. You start building your followers up. Next, you know, people will reach out to you. Hey, can you do promo? Hey, can you recommend my services? Yeah. And if they are a reputable person or they legitimate you could build a partner. You build a partnership with them and say, "Hey, I'll bring you this many people, or I'll expose your whatever on my platform. I get paid." So a lot of people wondering how they can get paid, and it's through affiliate marketing. If they don't have no money to get started, mm -hmm. I build affiliate marketing relationships with Mercedes Benz, um, any company, anybody providing a service. A lady called me today from AT and T. She offered me a deal. I said, "Look, what if I could bring you more people?" She said, "I will pay you." 
I said, cool, I can have about 20 people to you this week. And she said, if you could do that, we could work out a better deal. So I get my community or the people who I've helped, because once you help one person, once you help people one time, they're going to come to you for everything. Mm-hmm. And if they see every time you refer them to somebody or a person or you give them some information that benefits them, they're going to come to you for everything, even if it ain't your expertise. Mm-hmm. So I build affiliate marketing relationships with anybody selling a product, service, got something good that I like, and I let them know, look, I'll refer your stuff to my people. They're going to buy it. And they'll say, if you could do that, I'll give you X, Y, Z. And that's an easy way people can make money just in affiliate marketing. That's major, man. So what y'all need to do, y'all need to go to, listen, man, text GAME at 301-753-3349. 301-753-3349. Text GAME. He's going to give you a free ebook. You're getting a free ebook. But GAME and a, that listen, motherfucker. And a free, I'm talking about this is the trapper's way out. If you stuck in a trap in life and it's different traps, you might be sleeping with the enemy. You might be at this dead-end job. Whatever the trap might be for you. Trapper, listen, man, Trapper's way out. He's going to give you the game, and he's going to give you a free course. He's giving everybody. Do everybody get the free course? Everybody. Everybody who texts that number. They get Dang. a free ebook. They're going to get a free ebook and a free course. I'm going to say so a course. I'm going to say ebook course. That ebook, I usually sell that ebook for one ninety seven. I usually sell a course for like three ninety seven. So they get all. So everybody. So getting you that sitting free, around and you basement Bobby and you ain't doing nothing, man. Yeah. This is a way for you you're to get your, activate your fucking bank account, man. Especially if you're a couch warrior. This, this the boy reason right why we bring game. y'all this game. <laughs> you ever was a couch warrior? Tell the truth. Nah, I always had that go get it. I was but like, no, that don't mean you wasn't sleeping on the couch sometimes. Would you ever? Uh, was you I, ever slept, I slept on, nah, I, I slept on the couch when I lived with the wrong chick one time. And I was like, hey, it's time for us to break up. And I was like, hey, I'm sleeping in the other room till you find your way. You know so saying? how long you were sleeping in the couch? It was like 45 days. Oh, you a couch warrior then? Yeah. <laughs> you a couch warrior? Yeah, trap. he definitely he put yeah, yeah. But it was in my own house, Listen, though. Oh, he, was damn, stuck, oh, no, he was stuck in the trap of the couch. <laughs> so he had to figure his way out. His there. body sleeping, print still in that couch. He was, he was sleeping with the enemy. <laughs> Wherever that couch is, body that's print. That's a fact. I was sleeping with the enemy. Yeah, and that's dangerous. A lot of people be sleeping Absolutely. with the enemy. But listen, right now, what y'all need to do, tell them, man, before we get out of here, tell them how to get with you, man. Tell them, you know, what you're going to give them and anything, man. Man, look, follow me on Instagram. Make sure y'all text that number. Make sure y'all text GAME to 301-753-3349. Follow me on Instagram at Trapper's Way Out. The zero is a number zero. Yeah, the out, the out, and out. Yeah, absolutely. And we changing people's lives, man. We just taking people to the next level. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, I got dudes in prison that's executing, running these plays, adding value to me, adding value to the community. I'll show them something, and they'll spend more time studying it then I possibly can, and then they'll come back and start helping out my community. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's some powerful stuff we got going. So I'm right. actually giving people a glimpse in my into my mentorship, and my mentorship is a month long. I usually charge 5000 They're getting a glimpse in this course. They're going to actually see the people that's in my mentorship. They're going to actually see the dudes that's incarcerated in the jail cell on the call, and these dudes is just telling how I changed their life. And if I could do it for somebody that's in prison and they start multiple companies, multiple businesses, then it's really an inspiration to get the normal nine to five, the normal trapper, the normal person that just wants to be successful, wants to be a better version of themselves, wants to grow, wants to elevate. It's just cre- I created this community of people that's going to help hold them accountable. Listen, man, we appreciate having you, man. Right. Everybody right now, go follow them. Trapper's Way Out, man. That O is a zero. Listen, man, text GAME to 301-753-3349. He's going to give you a free ebook and he's going to give you a course. That's another episode of Million Dollars River Game Business Spotlight. And it's Trapper's like Way that. Out. Right. I knew you was going to be great, man. We appreciate you. I heard, I, you know, I always heard about you, you know, coming up because you're right up the street in Newark. And, uh, I see, watched you at the Olympics, you know, and when you won silver and the lady was interviewing you and said, congratulations, you know, you're a silver medalist in the Olympics and you bust out crying. It was like, silver? Like, basically, you was a young bull, but if you could really say what you wanted to say, you wanted to be like, bitch, what? (laughs) Fucking silver? (laughs) And just the fact that 10 out of 10 people who won a bronze, a silver medal, you know, because gold is the top. So if you win a gold, of course you're happy. But 10 out of 10 people that win a bronze, a a silver, 
they up there and they take that motherfucker with the ultimate pride because they understand that I'm second best in the world. Yeah. In the whole entire world. And I got a silver medal for the Olympics. The fact that the greatness that you had inside you was like, fuck being second. Facts. That shit second place. You know what? Facts. You know, the I, thing is, like. I, I knew you was going to be great. I, I set goals for myself. Like I set a goal for myself because the last Olympic gold medal we had was Andre Ward. That was in 2004. Right. So my goal was to bring a gold medal back to my country. So when I lost, it was like, you know, it felt like the one of the worst days of my life because it's like I put my whole life into becoming an gold. Olympic gold medalist and I didn't do it. So um, it was just, you know, preparation. It was certain things I was doing wrong and that I learned from now and I know how to conduct myself as a pro and be more disciplined and all that kind of stuff. So. I'm competitive. I don't like losing. I don't care at nothing. I asked you upstairs. I said, do you think they robbed you? And you said one of the coldest answers that I could ever hear from a youngin. Thanks. You said, no, I feel like I left it too close. Yeah. When I fight a person, it ain't supposed to be that close. Yeah. So the fact that it was close enough for the judges to even consider him. I lost. I lost. Thanks. And I respected that, man. Because you know, it could because you could have took the easy route out and said, Yeah, man, they you know. But your perspective, your I, your your perspective from the time that you lost to No, nah, I ain't, up, I'm up. not cool with being second. Hey and, Danny. Yo, what's up? Uh, listen, man, we got Shakur Stevenson over here, man. Shakur beat the ass Stevenson. We got Gil right here, too. I know you and Gil got a relationship, but I need to ask you a question. I need you not to be biased, Danny. What the fuck and who the fuck gave Gil the permission to be a fucking boxing commutator? What gym was he boxing in in Philly? What the fuck gym do he come out of, Danny? I don't know, but I know Gilly know his shit, though. Thank you. How the fuck, Danny, you don't know boxing. Thank you don't fucking know boxing, Danny. How the fuck you gonna say you know his shit? He ain't boxing no gym in Philly. It's a thousand gym. He, he followed the sport, so you know what I'm saying? He's a student of the game. Thank you. Danny, man. He, he, See, he, you ain't really got to fight to know the game. Thank you. you ain't got, but how is he speaking but, no shit? And I fought. He, he never fought nobody, yes, Danny. Who, who the fuck you know him to fight? What gym was he in, Danny? First of all, Danny. First of all, first of all, first of all, Danny. No, I used to take. I used to be my son's trainer. I used to take my son to every gym. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He ain't never lied. He, he did train his son. Oh, so you saying he's a he's a he's a boxing trainer? <laughs> yes. Is, wait, wait, hold on, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Danny father is a boxing trainer. Alright, so 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 your dad is a real boxing trainer. Is he one too? Yes. <laughs> is he qualified as a boxing trainer, Danny? That's all I want to know. <laughs> I would, I would say, I would say, yeah. Thank you, Danny. You biased, man. This is your fucking man. You biased. Danny, Danny, Danny you fucking biased. You ain't shit, I would Danny. Say, yeah, only because he know, he know about boxing. He know what he be talking about. Thank you. And he be in the gyms. You know what I'm saying? He be, he just watching the gym. He hanging uh, gyms and shit. Out. He's a gym <laughs> rat. You don't really know about boxing. Oh my god, I, I called the wrong motherfucker, man. All right, Danny, enjoy your day, man. All right, man. I called the wrong fucking person, man. <laughs> he mad as hell. He tried to call a nigga hate, thinking he gonna get some hate and fuck it. it. Look, round, round, round. Fucking tell me if you fuck a, you a trainer because you trained your son. Absolutely. Uh, they was listen, fucking. They was bums too. They ain't they ain't staying the, the game. The fuck out of here. <laughs> Mackinac was bums, man. That nigga ain't that motherfucker body beat him. I heard about little dirty little do dirty body beat him. He ain't go back to the gym. Fuck out of here. You keep showing hey. clips. You keep showing highlight reels and clips when he's shadow boxing. That shit don't count. You ain't show. You ain't post one fight of Mac yet. I noticed that. Said, no, this thing ain't post one fight of Mac. Not one fight. Oh, he shadow boxing. Uh, all this dumb shit. Uh, all this dumb shit. Ain't nobody right there. He shadow boxing. Yeah, go ahead, go, go, son. Yeah, he's a beast. You talking? Hey, about he's a beast. Hey, Mac gonna fuck you up. I'm talking about these shit. motherfucker shadow boxing. Mac gonna fuck you up. He was a fucking journeys man. <laughs> He was a listen. This son was a Mac was a fucking journeys man at like 14, 15. Motherfucker man, listen. I don't listen. I know that word. I know that word in boxing. He was a fucking journeys man. You tell me, yeah, I was a trainer, my son. You ain't post one fight of him. You always post he's shadow boxing. That's right. Hit the jab, throw the jab, go ahead. Duck. What is he ducking from the air? Motherfucker ain't do nothing, man. This shit is disgusting, man. 
You should be yeah. you should be you should be ashamed of yourself. Tell me, yeah, I trained my son. He never fought. He fought like two, three fights. Little dude, dirty beat, <laughs> hit him with a body shot. He stopped coming to the gym. Them the, little, and you told me, yeah, because uh, I told Mac. Now, now say if I'm lying. Yeah, I remember when Mac went in the gym with a uh, Bozy and them. Everybody that Bozy and them had the fight, and it was all young kids. None of them were. So the boy, asked, I, this is a classic story. Bozy. So the dude said they came down from Jersey to fight. He said, uh, so uh, excuse me, man, the kid oh, ain't got mouthpieces. Oh, God, man, Bozy said, lying, this is what Bozy man. said. Bozy said, oh no, we don't wear mouthpieces in this gym. And he said, oh, well, well, uh, Mac. My grandfather be like Listen, that, too. He though. said, Mac, you're not fighting. And he said, oh, well, Mac's not fighting none of them niggas. We're going to wait till one of the Jersey boys get it. <laughs> did you or did you not say that? Did you or did you not say that? You said that. You said, yeah, I ain't let Mac fight them niggas. Because uh, they was a little more. These niggas were straight out of North Philly. I didn't let them fight. They didn't wear mouthpieces. You fucking fake ass to my love. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What part of Jersey, though? I don't know what part. He said they was from, they was from, was they from Jersey or New York? It had to be no, they from New York. York. I think okay, they was from okay, like okay. upstate New York. So yeah, y'all ain't gonna play us like you gonna wake up New Jersey, bro. Man, this hold nigga's up. crazy, man. But he did say that. He said, Bozy said, oh no, my fight is we don't wear mouthpieces. That nigga be lying, man. Did, did Bozy say that? Yeah, Bozy said that. Fight, thank you. <laughs> he but I say, ain't say that shit you to myself. You, you said, Mac, Mac, <laughs> sit out this day. Sit out today. Go back to, he said, sit out today. Go back in the car. Go in the car. He he disappeared. Get in the car. The gill blended out. Weep. He blinked out the gym. Fuck out of here. Talking all this dumb shit. I was a trainer. You should be ashamed of yourself. Hey, hey man, don't listen to that. You nigga trained Shakur, your son man. to duck. Let me ask you. you your son was duck. <laughs> duck. Fuck out of here. The mighty ducks. The son was. He was his teammates of the mighty ducks. That's the shit I be talking about, man. Like motherfuckers. I already know. That. Listen, one thing I know about the boxing game. I'm not stupid. This is one thing I'm not stupid. Oh, it's a lot of ducking going on. Hey, listen, nah, man. Because I see certain people, I'm like, yo, Gil, why? That's one thing he could tell me something. I'll be like, why he ain't fight him? Oh, no, he ducking him. Oh, why he ain't fight him? Oh, no, he ducking him. They ain't going to let him fight. I'm like, I thought everybody posed to fight. How the fuck? Everybody not fighting. Because I'm saying to myself, he had a magazine in here one time. So he got all these people. And it, and it was like, I think ring, it was like, it, and it was box. The boxes had a weight class and all these names. So I'm like, okay, if that's number one and two, they got to fight, right? No, I don't go down like that. That's it. What the fuck you mean it don't go down like that? If he's number one, he's number two, and he got a belt, how he go and fight number seven? I don't understand that. It's what? too many belts, though. That's what it is. Yeah, a lot of fake belts. Yeah. I told you the only belt that I like is the, the green one. All them no, other belts. It, it's four real belts. Yes, yeah, no, 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 no. Four real the belts. The green joint with the gold shit on there, that's the best but, belt. But, <laughs> but, but joints, it's a bunch of other belts, too. That man. red belt, the, the red goofy joint with all the, it look like it's just bullshit. No, that's a real belt, man. No. Yeah. Yes, no, it is. WBC belt is the gold one, right? I mean, you're a champion yeah, of the world with that joint, man. Oh, which one? Which one? The IBF. I think that the, might be cool. The WB up. No, no, that's the bullshit joint. No. That's the bullshit joint. <laughs> no, no, I know that. It's, hey, it's on, a WBC on, and the IBF. Oh, yeah, yeah, shit, that shit don't do it. Put that aside. That shit don't mean that. Hey, listen, I'm telling you the two belts that I paid attention to. It's the, it's the IBF <laughs> and the WBC. Them the two belts. And the ring belt because they got the old fighters on there. That's the only reason no, the whole yeah. weight. No. If you take the old fighters over there, it don't really hold no weight. No, no. And, and it got, you got the WBC, you got the WBO, you got the IBF, and WBA. The WBA. Yeah, they all world champions, man. Bro, them, that's just like this. You no, know real champions, though. All right, all right so they okay, real, okay, okay. Champions. Okay, that's just like you got, that's just like you got this. Here go this. The W, the WBC, I mean, the, the my favorite belt, that's like motherfucking Death Row Records, right? Uh, that one joint you said, the IBO or some shit, that's like motherfucking Boo Boo Record label around the corner. That no, shit don't that, hold no fucking no, weight. Yes, it do. No, it what, don't. The IBO? The, the IBF. Oh, IBF on, yeah. That's people that's making up. Ex, you making them new federations, boxing federate for what? No, dog. That's always been like that. It need to be one fucking belt. It that, do. I agree that's with that. Bullshit. I it agree need to be that. one. Listen, it need to be one I belt in boxing. That. All that shit that lead that get people. Oh no, I got the two belts. So, well, if you got two belts and I got two belts, why are we not fighting? Right. I agree with that. And because, if you got four no, belts, no. But a lot of times though, that don't be on the fighters. That be on the promoters. Yeah. You got to so, understand. It's like it's like it's just like party promoting, bro. If I got Shakur Stevenson, right? All right. And he got two belts, right? And, oh no, prime example. Prime example. This is a prime example. In two weeks or next week or a couple weeks from now, Javante Tank Davis is fighting Roley Romero. Now, do Roley really deserve this shot at Javante Tank Davis? Fuck no. Who the fuck has Roley beaten? Nobody. It's for no a belt. No disrespect to Roley or none of that, but you ain't did nothing in boxing yet. I agree with that. Right? So Hold on, hold on. What numbers? But, but hold on. But hold on. But he's fighting Javante Tank Davis because 
He's on Floyd Mayweather's promotions, yeah. and he's on Floyd Mayweather promotions. And if these two niggas fight, guess who makes all the money? Floyd Mayweather promotions. If Floyd Mayweather promotions fights a top rank fighter, now we got to break money down. Yeah. And they don't like to break money down. So if Shakur Stevenson is number one in his division and top rank got a nigga that's remotely in the top three of that division, nine times out of ten, they're going to push him to fight that man instead of a motherfucker that's on PBC because, no, we're going to keep all the fucking money. And even if he lose, we still got the belts over here. But it could be done, though. No, like, it, it, be, it is getting done. Yeah, Deontay Wilder, Fury, yeah. Bud Porter. It is getting done because yeah. at the end of the day, is the 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 um the people are putting pressure on these to get this shit done yeah. because it's like, all right, these is fights that was really supposed to happen three years ago yeah. and they not happening. So now the fans is like, wait, hold on, wait, what the fuck is going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going? When you got all the fans saying that, then now it's like, all right, we gotta got to make no the choice, fight yeah. because this shit's about to make an asshole full of money that we not getting because we on some dumb shit. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it, it, it seems like, you know, Boxes oh, look, 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 got him running. Look, look, he was running. He just ran. Look, look, he, he tried to run. He tried to run from ball. Look, you see that? Cool. He, be, he, be on his, he be on his bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 look. Oh, oh, oh. No, he just <laughs> dropped. Oh, no, no, no. Fuck out of here, you know that nigga. He ran first. He ran first. Yeah, that ass nigga. He's like, look, 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 look nigga, drop me. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> they sit your dumb ass down. This is how Gil would be. If I was in the ring, you'd be running. Look, look, look. He's the fuck out of here. Look, look, he got away from you. Yeah, the dog. He ran. No, no, no. Why you keep watching? Dropped his ass. No, no, he tripped. The boy tripped. It was wet. Okay. See, I know I know a little something about what's going on, man. So, who was this dude? Was this dude the. Yes, like, he was a champion. He just took his oh, belt. He, he, 30 and 0. He was 30 and 0. Who had 30? 30? Yeah, he 30 and 0. 30 and 0, 23 knockouts. Mm. And you took his belt? What belt did he have? WBC. Oh, hey, Green he belt. had the real belt. This dude know how to fight. <laughs> he had the real belt. This boy had the real belt. This dude's a fucking animal. <laughs> He's a, he said, watch the fight. Bitch, you should have watched that shit. Last I don't really watch fights. I don't like <laughs> Dumb ass nigga. See, it's about this dude's an animal. Shit. He was an animal. He fucking cooked now. Hey. Fuck is she talking about? He gutted him, trimmed him out, oh, threw him shit. on the grill. And barbecue. Damn, he fucked him up. Yeah, barbecue. But yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> he worked him out. Yeah, he, told me, he knows up, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he gave that nigga Jane Fonda workout. Damn, yeah, he man. fucked him up. So, you know. Being in a relationship, man, because I see when you come in here, you you, you don't come in here with a gang of your homies. You brought the family you in here. You brought the you. family with you, man. Yeah. I'm I'm a family man at the end of the day. Like I I enjoy just chilling with my family. I enjoy being at home with my girl, my about. fiance, my uh brothers, my sister here, my cousin here. Like I'm a family man. Like I'd rather sit at home and chill with them. Yeah, spend time with them because you know, that's the best way to be. I, Far as like being a boxer, like being a family man is the best way to be. It's how you stay out of trouble, basically. Like, mm -hmm. and I try to keep myself out of trouble at all times. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely a family man. Damn, but let me ask you a question though. Like nine siblings in one house. How was it at dinner time? Like, nah, it was getting it was getting wild. Who was your favorite meal? Like they, when you favorite, think about nah, it, they we, had to cook eighty two pieces of chicken, man. That's nah, a lot nah, of we 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 was eating like uh, chicken nuggets and like you feel me fast like so quick stuff like that we put together. We ain't really have it. Just keep buying a bunch of food. We ain't have all that type of money at that time, so it you, was definitely you, tough, though. Do you think you're gonna start your own promotion company? Yes, because I see that's that's like the thing. You know what I mean? That's the that's the boss move now. I feel like that's the I started off with top rank, but um, as we keep going, I'm gonna keep getting bigger and I'm be able to do a lot of this stuff myself. I'm gonna mm -hmm. be able to be you learning the game right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm gonna be able to become my own promoter, basically. So. I'm on top of it. Like, do, like, like I, I don't know, but do you know how how do it go? Like, to be a promoter, so that means you just gotta, you gotta have enough money to rent the venue and pay the both fighters. Yeah, and go and negotiate the deals with uh one of them uh, Showtime or yeah the Zone. Or, set up or, set up the fights basically. That's all you gotta do. Yeah. Oh shit! I'm ready to start promoting. I'm ready to. Gotta have that money though. Like no, that. no, no, no. I know a couple boys around the way. I get some fights together. <laughs> I'm just saying, that it ain't got to be, you know what I mean? I can throw some people in the ring, start a little hood fights and some shit. You know what I mean? But start the money that the promoter's getting going to be way more than anybody because it's like, you feel me? Like, the fighters ain't going to get as much money as the promoter going to get. Because the promoter going to get money from HBO and Showtime. The, 
the network, sponsors. ESPN, all that kind of stuff. And, and the sponsors, <laughs> too, because, you know, you always see the sponsors' names being the rings, and you know what I mean? So That's on you, the way, though. Yeah, as long as you got relationships, man, relationships is worth more than money. Yeah, facts. Yeah, that's you know what I mean. And you a good, you a good, you you can see you a good solid person. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And you really love this boxing shit. You, it's not nothing else in life you really want to do right now yeah, other good. than box. You feel what I'm saying? So the only advice I can give you as long as you stay, you know, dedicated. And focus, man. The next ten years is the most important years of your life. You could do anything, man. Facts. I got you. Know I got you. I'm locked in, Gil. I already know you locked in. I'm locked in. Trust well, me. What you calling? Pop pop. Yeah, pop up. Pop pop ain't playing, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> pop pop. Pop pop. Old school discipline, yeah. nigga. Yeah. He one of the best coaches in the world. Yeah. It's and no, it's. I never seen a coach better than him, me personally. And he don't. And he don't get enough credit. He don't get no credit for. Half of the stuff he do, like the camps that we be having, like people don't know, like still to this day, me and him still like being camp arguing about no, the no, littlest no, no, no. stuff. Like I'm gonna say this though, he get credit. Nah, he don't get the credit he deserves. He don't get the credit he deserves. He get credit when he hold them belts in the air. Yeah, that's yeah. the real credit. Yeah, because because whenever they want to acknowledge him and not, because you know the boxing game funny. Anytime mm -hmm. they got like people like you speaking in the sport, it, it, it's just goofy, <laughs> but. I, I noticed that too. Certain motherfuckers don't be getting credit. They don't got to. But anytime you holding them, them belts in the air, when you winning, when you going there beating people ass, they ain't got to say it public, but he got the credit. Because yeah. if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be out here doing what the fuck you doing. Yeah. So you got to look at it like that. But, you know, it's always going to be, the, it's politics and all this shit. Yeah. I really, especially that boxing shit. There's a bunch of politics. Oh, he, my, he my biggest, like, he believe in me more than anybody. Like, yeah. he be mad at me if I get hit with a jab. Yeah. If I get hit with a jab, he's... He did like we said. We taught argue. you better than that. We done better than that. <laughs> yeah, we argue Training. all day. Like what you been doing when I wasn't around? Like duh, duh, duh. like we yeah. really just sit there and argue. And I'm like, Papa, I'm gonna beat the shit out of this dude. I fight. Like I promise you, he not gonna land the hook. Like I literally had to tell him a hundred times. Like Papa, he telling me in training, like you gotta watch out for the hook. He gonna be looking for the hook. I'm like, Papa, he's not gonna hit me with that hook. I'm gonna see that from a mile away. I didn't. I didn't my trainer ain't tell me that. That's why I got out of the gym. I know. Knock your watch. fucking mouthpiece off. I ain't watch twist out for your the hook. shit all. Twist your jaw all up like you was on, on that shit. Tell me, see, I, that's some good training he had. Yeah, because yeah, Pop Up understood. But yeah, you know why Pop Up knew? Why? Nigga, Pop hit Pop Up with that hook before. <laughs> Pop hey, nigga, watch that hook. <laughs> <laughs> you know that hook and clean pop, 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 no. You know that hook and clean But pop, pop, no. He was slipping one time, nigga. <laughs> nah, my grandfather, bad hook boy. Pop, no, but he pop, pop got caught with a hook. Trust me, you, the experience is the best shit. You hear me? Yes, it is. That's what pop, up Nigga, didn't I tell you keep the motherfucker hand up? Pop, pop, I told you he gonna hit me. No, I'm gonna hit you with a fucking hook. He gonna keep that <laughs> yeah. hand up, nigga. He be ready to fight me too. Huh? Yeah, I know. I ain't gonna lie. And then pop, up gonna be the nigga first. First nigga catch you with that hook. I yeah, you ain't see it coming, nigga. I told you. I be ducking. I don't you be want ducking. No smoking, you be ducking. You be ducking. Pop, pop, I hit you with that yeah. hook. He's strong as hell. I know. And he got the, and them joints, they old. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> the older your shit get, the harder them bitches get. They feel like, what? <laughs> yeah. The old motherfucker, see, laying a solid punch on it's you, old. punch you in tomorrow. You done. He always tell he me all I need too. is one. One well, punch, huh? Uh, he always said, <laughs> Damn, <laughs> all you need is one punch. Hey, you see, that's a real old way. You old way to watch him slipping a thousand of them joints. One joint to push you down. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, nigga, only need one. One motherfucker. You hear me, nigga? You. <laughs> nah, okay. I'm telling Damn. you right now, let me get the. the, the <laughs> nigga, you know, I'm always the nigga. I get one in on you, nigga. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Lights out. No, but man, we gonna give. Pop pop his motherfucking credit wow. on here. Give his flowers. Yeah. We gonna give you your flowers on here because Pop Pop, you took a young man who come from a household of nine siblings. Yep. Nine siblings. And you turned him into somebody special, man. Yep. You feel what I'm saying? And and not, not only did you turn him into a special athlete, you turned him into a special person. Right. You feel what I'm saying? A respectable young man, you know. I don't really hear him talk no shit or really unless he talking about boxing. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I never see you outside of your lane. I never see you doing nothing. I ain't trying to be somebody I'm, I'm not. I'm trying to be myself. Absolutely. And, you know, you out here being the best fucking version of yourself, man. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? You 24. You got your family with you. You know what I'm saying? You got two belts and a ring magazine belt. You feel what I'm saying? 
I don't personally believe you 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 bigger you big enough in the world that you supposed to be, but I yeah. know that shit's coming. Yeah, it's gonna get there. You feel what I'm saying? Because I see a lot of boxers who got a lot of more <laughs> followers than you and and got a bigger platform than you, but they ain't you. Yeah. That I I'm learning though. I'm learning now. Like it's a whole different world outside of boxing. Like to be a star, you gotta be a star outside the ring too. So I'm learning at the end of the day. Like I see everything y'all be doing with the videos and yeah. y'all focus, like y'all y'all putting yourself out there. I'm just, you know, taking my little notes and Absolutely. I'm gonna get there. But but let me ask you a question. How is it that the the best fighter ain't the biggest fighters? Because it's a popularity contest. Like okay. a lot of these people, they probably in the clubs every day, got the chains on, everybody looking at that, like looking at the flashy, the jewelry and all that kind of stuff and the cars and they posting it like I got I got a nice car too. I ain't never really even post up my car type shit. So um, it's just a different game. Like it's a popularity contest outside the ring. So they gonna be the biggest fighters regardless. But um, the best fighter is like somebody like me or like Bud, who like you know we really family man. Like I don't be having a I be with my family all the time, so I don't be thinking about all that other yeah. stuff. Yeah. Now I'm about to start playing the game. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, because, yeah, because you 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 celebrate when you get in and then you start to understand. Like, wait, hold on. This person, he got he got sponsors. He Thanks. got wait. I'm I'm really the guy. Thanks. Like he he's not going to be around three years from now. As soon as he get the right fight, he's done. He's out of here. You feel what I'm saying? And then you you see it, so you start to be like. You know what? Let me loosen up a little bit. Let me start showing them a little bit more because as sad as it is to say, man, social media has taken over everything, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything. Yeah. It's boxers now that's boxing used to be all about being a champion, man. Yeah. You get niggas now and the champion to have uh, 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers. The nigga that ain't the champion got a million followers. Thanks. He the number one. He the he your mandatory. That nigga don't even want to fight you. Yeah, I'll fuck the He's belt. selling out arena, so he cool. He right. good with what's he going like, on. He like, fuck the belt. Facts. I don't, I don't you know. He going to beat my ass if I fight him. I'm going to sell the arena out regardless, nigga. Yep. If I fight you or not. If I fight so, a nobody, that nobody ever Bring heard a Johnny of. Donut, Johnny Donut. <laughs> yep. Boop, pop, oh. We run, jump <laughs> on the ring. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, no, you fought your 44th cab driver, but don't the people Don't they got it something where you got to give up a belt or something if you if you said pass Oh, yeah. Phone? See. What's that called? Lomachenko did that. Devin Haney was Lomachenko's mandatory. He was scared. He didn't want to fight Devin Haney. Damn. Yeah, so I like that either. he said... You take the belt back. No, fuck that. I'm no, they they bumped him up though. Yeah, they, they gave him a super uh a super belt yeah. that don't mean nothing. Yeah, that's stupid. It's don't this shit don't even. They mean offered nothing. me a super belt. I ain't taking it. Right. He, he wouldn't see. He'd take a super belt. Yeah. Fuck right. Like it, like a I'll super belt. Where it's belt. like you know. <laughs> take any belt. He was a boxing <laughs> boxing for What's wrong with you? <laughs> you was a fucking a uh, pink belt kung fu. Fuck is you uh, talking I was about? A black belt. Always. You wasn't no so fucking black belt. belt. He was a fucking yeah. The, yeah it was a black belt. He was a fucking tan belt. I was black. Fuck I is wrong know. with you? Taekwondo. Taekwondo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was he he was a he, first of all he was a black belt in jail jitsu you hear me <laughs> and then I turned taekwondo I, I started my own form of martial arts. You got any called. video man? Yeah, I got a lot of it. I started my own uh, form. Earl pitching his ass us? in the park. Get the fuck out of here! I you started show us something, man. Like, a kiss, you know, sacred. <laughs> uh, a lot of my stuff. Uh, I started to own my own uh, my own practice of martial arts <laughs> called Lo Kwan Do. It's my style, you know, a style I created. Yeah, where the, you run. Get the fuck out of here as soon as I'm drama <laughs> come. You you haul ass from the fucking yard no, to no, your that's, cell. That's go Kwando. Where you go. That's not low Kwando. We fight. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. So man, listen, Shakur, man. We just want to shout you out, man. Keep being great, young bud. Yeah, appreciate it. Keep doing you, Neff. Yes. You know, we know in we know you got a hundred million waiting on you. Facts. I can't wait to get there. Hundred million. You know what I mean, it's only a matter of how often you fight. Yeah. We before you're there. there, you know what I mean. We so just make there, sure you stay in that gym. Make sure the motherfuckers keep you active. Yeah. Three times a year, if possible. You know stay away mean? from that one shot. Yeah. Stay away from that motherfucker. Where my pop grandfather pop throwing? He throwing it at me, so that yeah, one point. Watching out for it. Stay away from that. To the, that, that, that hook pop pop talking about. Yeah. <laughs> the pop pop. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to pop. 
You know what I mean? You out here doing great shit, OG, and we appreciate you, man. Um, and anybody you want to shout out before you get out of here, man? Nah, just keep tuning in. I'm a, a superstar in the making. Shakur Stevenson, uh, I'll probably be back in the ring probably like August. Uh, I'm going to be a superstar, so keep watching. All right. Well, to me, you follow, already follow, a superstar. Follow me on Instagram at yes. Shakur Stevenson. You see it right there on the follow screen. Follow me on Twitter at Shakur Stevenson. Uh, keep tuning in, man. Let's Absolutely, get it. Absolutely, man. And it's just like that. Right.